Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Evil Man. John McAfee Part 2. <laughs> yes, it is John McAfee Part 2. Part 1 was just so much fun. We decided, what if we made this two? Well, he lives such a crazy, fast-paced mm-hmm. life that it just got out of control. It just feels like this tumbling ball that doesn't stop rolling downhill towards you to smush you. Yeah, yes, exactly. That's exactly how I'd put it. We're stretching our Johnny, and we're making him, yeah, double double epi. Stretching our Johnny. I like that. I like that. Got in trouble for stretching my Johnny the other day. <laughs> stretching my Johnny. Well, Johnny! <laughs> Mike, um, speaking of stretching your Johnny, yes. before <laughs> we started recording, you brought up that, um, well, you didn't exactly stretch your Johnny earlier today, but you did get three cavities filled. Go- yes, I didn't know where, you're go- where you were going with I mean, with it was this. a bit of a stretch yeah. to, to connect them. but You stretched your Johnny just to get <laughs> to that <laughs> segue. Like you snapped your Johnny. I did, I uh, did. I, my Johnny just snapped. Ooh, my Johnny. This morning, I went, I got out of bed, I yawned, I went, oh. Good morning, Mr. Sun. And then the first <laughs> thing I did is I had to leave the house and go to the dentist. And they gave me, they had to fill in three cavities. Ooh. Uh, I got three fillings. They had to remove an old one and put a new one in. Because it wasn't fashionable anymore? Yeah. It, it was gold. And <laughs> this, one, this one's pl- uh, platinum. Listen to this. <coughs> oh, Mr. Sun. Sun, Mr. Golden Sun. <laughs> please shine down on me. Because I'm going to the dentist. <laughs> Good luck, Michael. H- have, have you had... <laughs> <laughs> so did you have to do the thing where they, they stick a needle in your gum? Here's the thing. They started. Dr- they had to drill to make the hole bigger before they could fill it with whatever the thing is. Uh, and at the beginning, they were like, do you want uh, freezing? Do you want like a needle to f- with anesthetic? And I said, uh, no. What? And then they did all three. Without freezing me, the worst it got is they were drilling into my tooth, and I felt a few, like, I guess they touched the nerve or something. I felt like a couple, like, sh- electric oh shocks. God. That hur- makes my sphincter <laughs> go <laughs> bonkers. But it didn't Same really, here. It didn't really hurt that much. But what did feel weird is they had to dry the whole. I had to dry Why my Why did holes. you pass on the freezing? Because I was like, I don't want a needle in my gums. Plus, I'll have to, I won't be able to eat for, like, three hours, and I'll be drooling. It's kind of a ba- badass move, to be honest. Damn, That's dude. scary. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like getting a tat on your elbow. Yeah. <laughs> or giving birth without medication. Giving birth without medication. Right. And so without the worst I Freezing the baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt a few, like, <laughs> on my uh, nerve, I guess. And then they had to blow air into my holes of my cavities to, <laughs> to dry them out. And that did felt the, crazy. Did the dentist do that, like, with his mouth? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell um, me when to stop. <laughs> and um, that felt weird. Then they filled them in, and then um, they were like, "Okay, next time you come in, we'll look at your your bite." I have two dentist, doctor, whatever, like f- close physical proximity <laughs> checkup thingies to mention. Okay. One. Okay. Don't you find it funny when you're like lying down in this sort of vulnerable position, and then someone, like a nurse or someone, comes in to talk to the doctor, and then they turn around and talk near you but you're stuck in that vulnerable position Mm -hmm. and their bodies are still close to you so they're like butts by your head while they're talking to somebody else yeah that's weird right and then also (laughs) when you go to like doctors or nurses or dental hygienists or whatever and then they're operating on you and if they're bosomy, <laughs> their bosoms are rubbing against your body while they're doing this I, I, medical I knew, I knew work. that was what you were going to say. <laughs> Why? No, and I agree. I mean, yeah. look. It How do you feel about that? Well, I, I remember being a teen and going like, whoa, <laughs> she likes me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't happen to me today. No, but they oh, did give me the, the sun, like the dentist sunglasses. Oh, that's fun. Those are the best. And they charge a lot of money. Oh. oh, do you have insurance for? You? I do have oh. benefits currently. Yes, you know. Nice. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. I've never had a cavity. Still in your whole life. In my entire life. What? Oh, I've had a. And yeah. I, I cracked a tooth uh, last year, and they kind of gave me a filling because the tooth cracked, and so that was my first experience getting a filling. It sucks. How did you crack your Sorry. goddamn tooth? I'm biting. 
biting an English muffin or something. <laughs> it was so <laughs> lame. And I just went, oh, ouch. And there was a crack in my tooth and they filled yeah. it in. But they had to like, you know, um, shave off some of the tooth and then add a new top to it. I didn't know that they did this kind of thing. So did they put shaving cream on the tooth? No. They shaved <laughs> it? And they, they, they gave me the needle and numbed my mouth. But it is unpleasant getting that needle. I can't believe they do yeah. this to kids. Yeah. Well, I got three fillings. Two on my left side, one on my right side. And then when they finished, they were like, okay, we need you to like bite down. And then it felt like super uneven. Like oh, I hate shit. that. So they had to then keep going in and uh, sand oh, down God. the fillings until I could close my mouth properly. So you had your teeth sanded raw, like yeah. no anesthetic. Yes. And That's fucking fillings. crazy, yeah. man. Were your fists gripped really tight? <laughs> A little bit. And my face was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you sure you don't just want some <laughs> anesthetic? No, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's like we're giving a feeling to Mad Max over here, just grit- gritting and be like, Argh! <laughs> well, Mike, I totally get that. You're taking torture. <laughs> that feeling like your teeth aren't don't fit right is so annoying. And yeah. I actually think I just really overreacted to a similar thing because uh, I had braces when I was a kid, and I have bars behind my teeth, and one uh, one of the sort of areas of the bar. The, the, my dentist i kept biting it and breaking it and he so he just kind of removed the bar from from being connected to one tooth mm. and the tooth moved a bit and i have a little <laughs> gap now in my teeth that wasn't there before which kind of drove me crazy and i got really annoyed feeling like this tooth was moving and it, you know when you feel like a tooth is moving and it's a bit sore it dri- dri- i was definitely being a bit ocd about it but it was driving me crazy and so i asked my dentist like what can I do? It, I don't want it to move anymore, and it, it bothers me when I feel like it's moved a bit. And so he's like, you could get a retainer. So I was like, okay. So I'm going to go pick up a retainer. Now, soon. But I only wear. I only have to wear it when I'm sleeping. And I think right. even then I'm only going to wear it if I feel like anything's going on. I cut out coffee recently. I'm still having caffeine in like tea form and Diet Coke form. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I noticed tension in my jaw lessened. Without caffeine. Did you lessen the caffeine? Without, yeah, because ca- coffee's just in me. It makes everything clench and tight and tense more. Hmm. Makes me insane, Weird. to be honest. I never usually find I feel any different from coffee. And I can drink a coffee at like 9 p.m. and go to sleep what? at like 10. It's like you my sister. Lucky duck. I have to put a cap on even tea, like caffeinated <laughs> tea at 5.30 yeah, or I'm up For late. For sure, me too. <laughs> so I'm actually, we just had Diet Cokes with our Thai food right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm pointing at it, and James and Mike are looking at my can. Mm. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm worried about this. Don't worry about Diet Coke. It's going to be... Never mind about Diet Coke. It's going to be okay. Never you fret. Mm. You never know. There's caffeine in it. There is caffeine in Diet Coke. What is it? Coke Zero has no caffeine. Coke Zero has, like, nothing in it somehow. It's, it's like... It has no don't sugar. Don't worry. It's got no calories, which doesn't make I any sense. I think it still has caffeine, too, but it has no sugar. No sugar. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations on getting a f- three fillings yeah. uh, bare and Mike, bareback. I will remind <laughs> you, you um, Mike is yawning, and I will remind you, you are being recorded. So our f- our <laughs> visual our visual viewers right now are seeing you yawn. Anything you say or do will be used against you. <laughs> uh, I need to go in next time. and g- I want to get my teeth whitened, and I have a little chip on a tooth that I want to get filled in. Let's see. It's my front tooth. Let's see. Okay. Got the a little, what happened, little, man? little chip. What happened? I don't know. The dentist was like, I was like, can you fill it? Can you fix it? And she was like, no. It's probably because you grind them at night, so we have to give you a night guard before we give you a filling. And I was like, all right. Wow. No, well, that's another thing about dentists, I believe, is that they're constantly trying to upsell you stuff while you're stuck in the chair yeah that happens to me she was like want to buy my watch <laughs> yeah <laughs> what kind of watch are you using sir i am worried that i impulse <laughs> and totally unnecessarily impulse bought this retainer but it's too late i've got to go pick it up next i week. bought a teeth whitening thing from them once that didn't even work let and me see I your teeth it. no that's let me see no they're not they're not they're they're not they're very off-white no i've never noticed that mm, they're not off-white well uh. they're not white they're not white, white. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty white. Hmm. I don't know. You know, talking about your guy's teeth and how <laughs> I'm going, why was I so fixated on this little gap that popped up in one between one of my teeth? Because it w- in my head, I'm thinking, oh, God, everyone could probably see I have this gap in my teeth now. And then I'm going, 
I never noticed Mike had a chip. Yeah. I never noticed Chris Chris's teeth weren't perfectly white. Nobody even fucking notices, do we they? We all have flaws that we see more than the world. And others. <laughs> Ever, nobody looks at our damn faces at all. They don't yeah. care about it. They only care about their own faces. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody only cares about their own face. <laughs> um, I had another thing to raise here. Mm. Um, I feel like we're playing poker. Oh. oh, God. So we're recording at Bob Bazaar, which mm-hmm. is a store at 73 Ronces Vale in Toronto. And we forgot to mention it last episode. We could insert it or just double mention it here. But we want to thank we should insert it. Bob Bazaar. Uh, Mike, yawning again. It's not a great look, but I guess you can't control it. Mm-hmm. We're sorry. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're at Bob Bazaar. It's a great store, and they're letting us record here, mm-hmm. uh, Sophia and Nicole. But... When we record here, to make it look good on camera, we're sort of bunched together at a table. And we're cr- sitting yeah, really, really nice fun. and close. Yeah. And Chris, we both felt like we're giddy or something. Yeah. That we're so close together. There's some something going when on. When we record really close proximity physically, we get giddy like boys at a sleepover party. Yeah. And face it, guys, we're the snuggle bug boys. <laughs> and Mike, I didn't say it. When we recorded, um, what was the episode we did that cr- uh, uh, that Chris led on a couple last week? I guess Varg Varkness. Yeah, and I was sitting next to you, Mike. Yeah, and I did feel something. I felt, I felt like a giddiness. No, the last episode was Mike's. Um, oh, Unity, Mid- Unity, Unity Midford. Midford. And I was so close to Mike, and I'm like, this feels. Um, what's the word? Electric. electric. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. I think I can feel the electricity from yours guys' bodies. Yeah, I yeah. felt like last week I could. And that someone just scared the crap out of me. Someone <laughs> commented on the Discord, oh, you guys have a crazy energy. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, because I was an inch from Mike for two hours. Yeah. And I emanate <laughs> energy <clears throat> and my aura is inspiring. And it is. Yeah, yeah. It, I've yeah. never thought, I've never, I guess, experienced some kind of non-visual energy from Mike that way. Yeah. And I'd like to sit next to Mike <laughs> again going forward some other time. I'm getting it from Chris, too. But I'm getting it from Chris, mm. too. <laughs> but uh, there was something coming <laughs> off of Mike. I'm in the middle this time. <laughs> yeah. When you guys feel energy? Maybe this is like, like, yeah. Is this like male, like a men's group? Like, yeah. Mm. if you just sit really close to your male friends, you we should <laughs> hug after this episode. <laughs> Well, I feel like, Chris, you're in the middle. I feel like James and I are both suckling energy from you. Mm. Yeah, mm. you're suckling from mm-hmm. his left, mm, you know. <laughs> energy nipple. Energy yes. nipple. And I'm suckling from Chris's right. His energy yeah. nipple. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. Yeah. I feel like, you know, some sort of cow. <laughs> energy cow. <laughs> energy cow. And energy energy cow. Yeah, energy yeah. cow that distributes to his two <laughs> friend little calves. Yeah. Yeah. And we're just oh sucking, <laughs> sucking yeah. ourselves uh, silly. I think it would be, c- if anyone li- uh, listening is an artist or a painter, <laughs> I would love to see a picture of two calves <laughs> sucking on a cow's nipples and electricity bolts are going into their well, mouths. Yeah, to be clear, it's an electricity cow, elec- electric cow, yeah. energy cow, sorry, Ener- energy cow. Yeah. And we're suckling energy from your nipples. Yeah. Well, you could draw it being me and James and Mike as is, but I picture like I'm. I'm picturing a cow thing right now, but if you want to get that gritty. Yeah. Wasn't the cover of... Maybe electricities are coming out of my nipples and going into <laughs> James and Mike's mouth. Electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Electric bolts are coming out of my nipples and going into James's and Mike's <laughs> mouths. Chris, wasn't yeah. um, the cover of Mother's Milk, the Red Hot Chili Peppers album, like a, w- a woman feeding two babies from her breasts? No, she's actually got the Red Hot Chili Peppers in her hand by her breasts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because so I imagine Chris is the yeah. lady and we're like oh. the little babies drinking from your Right. Breasts. But that album cover is terrifying because you have to wonder, is that a giant woman and they're regular size? Or is she? did they get shrunk down and she's a regular woman? That's a great question. And they never and if they, they never did explain. get shrunk down, yeah. then when did they get shrunk back? Yeah. Because... I don't think they're that small during the recording of Blood Sugar Sex Magic. <laughs> no, they were back to regular size. Yeah, and that woman was dead. You owe <laughs> us an explanation, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Red Hot Chili Peppers, if you're listening. Also, Flea, if you're listening. <laughs> do you meditate every day? I want to know for my own... 
I just like I think Flea has a really interesting life schedule. Hmm. He has a clean, healthy speaking of electricity, he has a clean, healthy life. Wow. He's sober, he's ovotarian. What's ovotarian? Or in pescatarian. I think he only eats eggs and fish and veg vegetables and stuff. Huh. Wow. I don't know why I just ch killed all the <laughs> comedy by <laughs> genuinely saying, flee, call me. Um, so, Chris. Uh, oh, sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Hey, I just met you and you're flee. So call me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just met you. <laughs> And this is crazy, <laughs> but you're flea, <laughs> and I'm a kid. Oh, I blew it. That's I, I know yours you was love better, flea, Mike. and I love the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I read, f I, yeah, I listened to the audio book of Flea. I've talked about this before on the podcast, mm. and he reads it. I cut you but off. But I, I was just going to say, I, I know you love him. I'm a fan, too, but he does talk kind of funny now. Do you know what I mean? In which way? I guess like a guy who did too many drugs. Don't yeah. you think? I don't know. Maybe he kind of. I mean, they all. They definitely did a, a lot of drugs squirrely. when they were young. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think he's a wild. I think he's always been a wild, crazy person. They all seem like their do dicks do have do been do around do the do block. Do 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 do. I agree though. Yeah. I agree that Michael Balzari probably has been around the block. That's Is this your please. favorite rock and roll <laughs> riff ever? But do 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 do. Um, I know, I know, true. Don't hurt the funky. <laughs> Don't hide your funky. Put it in my monkey. You are watching the cone heads. <laughs> I know, I know it's true. Ding, dang, dong, ding, dang, dong. Cone heads on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Aykroyd and Chris Foley. Jane Curtin from Original <laughs> SNL. <laughs> <laughs> All around the world, doing funky things, <laughs> squeezing my butt cheeks together, <laughs> picking up stuff with my butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you picture the Red Hot Chili Peppers in their green room picking things up with their butt cheeks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> remote control, <laughs> per, uh, uh, per diem. <laughs> <laughs> their per diem. Where should I put this, boys? Uh, oh, right God, here. Why did I even ask? <laughs> hey, put it in my butt! <laughs> That's flea. <laughs> Do you think uh, <laughs> uh, Anthony Kiedis, when he's making love, sounds like that? Sort of like, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Does he talk like this? That, like ding, <laughs> dang, dong, ding, dang, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong. That's him coming. <laughs> oh, my God. Doody, doody. Um, yeah, but people say he's a bad singer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. But then my wife really doesn't like them but then i'm like i know <laughs> i know anthony kiedis is like people say he's a bad singer right and she goes it's not i don't even think he's that bad a singer i just think their songs are too weird <laughs> 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 it's such a funny way to put the red hot chili peppers <laughs> their songs are too weird <laughs> oh man <laughs> so uh chris yes this past week i got off my tuchus and I rented a film called Who's Your Father, starring Chris Locke. People out there, you should rent it. It is really funny. Chris was great, and I had a great time watching it, and I genuinely really enjoyed it. Congratulations. Thank you so much for bringing that up, James, and thank you for all your kind words. I really appreciate it. I second what James is saying. I came to the Toronto premiere screening i know I you're think? at the q a i was too nervous to ask a question but uh -huh. um now I'll, now i'll ask you a question how does it feel to be part of such a great movie thanks it was really wild you know and it's still out there i i'm glad you're bringing it up now because it's on paramount plus canada mm -hmm. streaming if you and you can also rent it on youtube at least in canada yeah you can rent it anywhere like uh, apple youtube porn hub cineplex even limewire <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can rent it on limewire but the thing is, is you know what I really did notice uh, being part of a big hit film sensation like you're talking about, Mike? 
it's so funny that it's a Canadian project. I really finally learned what it's like to be like, because, you know, sometimes we do stuff for CBC or like Bell, luckily, and it's always nice to get some work on some shows and stuff like, you know, that's for sure. we've lucked out. Mm. Um, but you're always like, you're used to it being like, ah, people in Canada don't think that those things are a big deal. But then when you star in an independent movie that's written and directed by by um, a creative artist, Jeremy Larder wrote and directed it, and the whole crew put their heart and soul into it, and uh, it comes out in the film, and then you still tell people like, hey, I starred in this thing, you should watch it. You really do get the vibe, that classic cliche that Canadians are like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's quote unquote good. And well, then they don't rush to see it, or they don't care to see it because it's such a Canadian thing. I, I just really did actually finally really felt that vibe over these last few months where it's like, I was genuinely sh surprised and happy that it turned out actually like a really fun, good film. Americans probably don't know that, that yeah. Canadians, if you, Canadians, even if Canadians you say like, don't want to know a Canadian thing. No, it's <laughs> true. Or they'll instantly be like, well, it's probably lame. We're kind of, I, I've always thought we're very low self esteem. -y. Yes, we are. But we're also like mad at other Canadians who try to do stuff. True. It's bizarre because it's like all the reviews from the movie, uh, a lot of them start with, it's actually really good. <laughs> it's genuinely good. It's really funny. I, you know, like the, the, it, there's always this like, uh, what it, you have to put that precursor before it. It's actually really good. I'm blown away because I thought it would suck. I thought it would be like that movie where the kid has to drag another kid in a wagon across the country <laughs> or something. <laughs> was that the... No, oh, I don't mean to diss anybody. <laughs> I'm just joking. But it's hard sometimes. It is hard. And, like, I wasn't sure how it would turn out. I trusted Jeremy and Sue and Jenna and everyone involved. Everybody involved is awesome. I think because the one but Canadian I movie... You still never know. Maybe people are feel like they got burned because the one Canadian movie they've seen is The Sweet Hereafter, which is such a downer. Yeah, a school bus that falls into a lake, full Where of children. Full of children. Whereas, yeah. who's your father is upbeat and doesn't have that in it. Well, spoiler alert: wasn't there a school <laughs> bus that crashed full of kids in your movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, James, you oh, didn't watch right. the right. You I watched think the Sweet Hereafter. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah, I did. Sweet Hereafter is not the movie that you were in, Chris. But do 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 do. All around the world, buses crashing in the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the Sweet Hereafter song in the closing uh, credits of the Sweet Hereafter is the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> Children in a bus. <laughs> suck do, 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 do. my kiss. <laughs> <laughs> the end of Sweet Hereafter. But do 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 All around the world, kids drowning buses. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyways, thanks for letting me make that point about Canadian film industry. Uh, I'm sure it goes up and down quality-wise with films. Mm. But, man, we got to get our ass out of that uh, instantly hating on ourselves thing because yeah. it would help me get the movie out more. Buck up, <laughs> Canada. Take some goddamn pride in your <laughs> cinema. <laughs> Take some pride pills. Take some pride pills or or else I'm going to... You have you'll have to deal with me. Oh. And I mean that. I mean that. <laughs> Canada, take some pride pills, <laughs> or we're gonna give you pills that make you die. <laughs> Just like Trudeau, uh, well, trying to encourage <laughs> euthanasia. Can I say oh this God. is a, a much smaller thing than, than you have done by starring in a full-length feature film? Mm. But the set I did at the Winnipeg Comedy Festival yes. last year in May. Just came out on CBC yes. Gem, and it's free to watch, and you can watch it as long as you're in Canada. Okay, you can't watch it abroad. Um, you can message me, and I can tell you how you can't watch it abroad. Oh if my you, god! If you want to, if you want to see it, I'll tell you exactly how you can't see it. Oh, well, Mike is if winking. You live abroad. Um, but yeah, it was a, a gala that Jackie Pirico, uh, f favorite of the show, was on as well. She was very funny. Um, and my set is on there, and uh, if listeners want to watch it, you should uh, check it out. Congrats, Mike. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, the stills that they posted look great. You looked good. They'll probably Thank post you. clips of you, too. I hope so, because they didn't post anything about our gala yet, uh, but they did the other ones, so hopefully they will. It's coming. Uh, I mm. bet they will. Yes. Congrats. And also, I am extremely grateful for being in the movie and grateful for the feedback that I've gotten. 
It is funny though. It is an uphill thing to be like, check out this thing I made in Canada. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know. It's just yeah, you, I did feel it. It's kind of interesting. Mm. Love you, gentlemen. Before we get back into Johnny McAfee, the freak. Oh yeah, he's interesting. I just want to mention that we have a Patreon account at patreon.com slash evil men. Please sign up. You get two bonus episodes a month. You get to join our Discord. If you're already a member, thank you very much. Um, and we also want to thank Bob Bazaar again for letting us record in their beautiful store at 73 Roncesvalles Avenue in Toronto. If you're in the area, come check it out. Buy some stuff. It's a fantastic gift store mm -hmm. stuff or, you know um cool stuff you could put in your house i mean that's a terrible no like terrible honestly description i would I say said, like this thank you so much sophia and nicole for allowing us to record in this incredible store i w i will say that this store is full of it they've got something for everything that's right it's so good it's so unique um there's all kinds of some aw girls just walked by and laughed at us oh shit it's got big what windows in the store losers? it's got big open <laughs> you think windows they laughed like they're cute or laughed like who are those old losers <laughs> <laughs> those old guys are cute <laughs> <laughs> they're sitting so close together yeah they're the snuggle bug boys <laughs> yeah they must feel <laughs> each other's energy <laughs> But they've got <laughs> candles here. They've got uh, <laughs> rugs. They've got wicker baskets. They've got books for children. Vintage they've got toys. They've got this. And it's a little toy cat. They have teeth teething toys. Uh, rubber in the shape of vegetables. And they're nice. Come check it out. Snacks. Bah, bizarre. Hey, James. Mm. What do you think happens to us after we die? Wow. Well, hmm. I don't think it's impossible that our consciousness exists outside our body, oh. but I don't know beyond that. And who's this? Uh, who's this week's evil man? Oh, great question. Uh, well, Mike, it's actually the same as last week. Oh. This is like, have you? Do you ever? Um, you know, you wake up and you put on the same T-shirt two days in a row. Yes. You give probably it a not. Mm? Smell. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're okay. Yeah. Probably not underwear because yeah. that gets stinky. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Have you ever done that? I've done that where I go, is this underwear still okay to wear? And then you smell it, and then you go, oh, I never wear no, it. No, I never smell it. Well, I don't underwear. usually, yeah. but well, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> smell my own. Oh, oh, no. oh, I think I couldn't <laughs> even say underwear. <laughs> so, oh, no. Uh, smell my own. Chris just had a stroke. <laughs> smell your underwear every day, dang <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Smell underwear every day. That's so funny. <laughs> There's just be like I smell think underwear <laughs> every day. You know, God, you gotta uh, make that song, Mike. <laughs> There's um, an energy between us. <laughs> 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 I was gonna say, remember in the '80s when your kids went to bed oh, and yes. you put all the TV dinner micro microwave trays into the trash can, mm. and you yes. folded up your TV dinner tray tables and put them back in the corner behind the hutch. Yeah. And you watched part one of the end of season whatever of Dallas and someone shoots JR. Yes. Well, this episode is like the beginning of the next season of Dallas. And you've put yeah. your TV dinner trays back in the trash can and your TV dinner tray tables folded up behind the hutch again. Mm -hmm. And your kids are one half a year older mm -hmm. and they've gone to bed again. And it's time for you and your husband to watch part two of. Who shot Jr. And you're smoking, mm. and you're smoking and watching in your TV. House. Yeah. <laughs> smoking in your house, <laughs> and the smoke is is wafting upstairs to where your children are sleeping. Oh, I <laughs> love that. Yeah, they don't have a choice. They have no choice. They have no choice. They're eating smoke for years, and they're dreaming of smoke. <laughs> I'm <laughs> dreaming of smoke. <laughs> Well, um, last time we left our hero John McAfee. Exactly, he smoking. had um, did a lot of drugs and drank. Yes, he. If you remember, he snorted a whole bag of DMT, and his, uh, the rest of his life might have been just a DMT experience. He's like the opposite of a nerdy Mr. Bill Gates. Bill Gates never snorted an entire bag of DMT. He never uh, was found hiding behind a trash can by his boss. No, you know he never. 
um, did so much cocaine that he uh, uh, shattered himself away in a hotel or something? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Um, no, he never did any of those things. The riskiest thing Bill Gates ever did in his life is putting his penis back in his pants before all the pee drips were done. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Just kidding. He's probably crazy. <laughs> he's probably done insane stuff. I wonder. He's probably eaten a live monkey while he was trying to get away. <laughs> Who do you think's a bigger <laughs> freak, Zuckerberg or Gates? Zuckerberg. Yeah. I mean, he showed us his freak face. <laughs> what do you mean? With the white sun makeup on and oh, stuff. And he yeah. rides the, like, gravity <laughs> surfboard thing. Now and he's the, like an MMA fighter. And the Caesar haircut. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding, Zuck. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All these guys end up being like, how do I grapple my enemy? Oh, and Bezos is an. I think Bezos is is cool? maybe the crazy. <laughs> no, the craziest. <laughs> like, because he he. I know that Zuckerberg is does MMA, but Bezos' whole physicality has transformed. Where he looks like a Bond villain now. He must be yeah. steroiding, but they're all, they all be, are or, or testosterone therapy yeah. or something. I don't know. I don't even. It's so crazy that we can't even. Like even come close to remotely imagining what it's like to have their wealth and success. Imagine if like J D Rockefeller or like the the um the robber barons of like the uh, early twentieth century, late nineteenth century, were all like jacked up and on steroids, <laughs> like J D Rockefeller or uh, <coughs> who's the the railroad guy, you know those guys, mm. the monopoly, yeah, the monopoly guy. guy. <laughs> what the about monopoly William man. Randolph Hearst? Yeah, imagine if he was like the strongest man. Yeah, ever. <laughs> it's all oiled up and had like cheek implants and like um, <laughs> hair plugs and like, yeah, yeah. Henry the Eighth was just a fat fucker. Yeah, he didn't get all buff. No, half the old British kings had to get their feet cut off because <laughs> they had gout. Yeah. Well, can I ask you one more thing? Yeah. Before we go into McAfee, sure. Um, is the metaverse still happening? I think I think Zuck wants that to happen because he just did that video where he <laughs> was talking about the the pl- the Facebook VR helmet. Yeah. Right. I he had his friend who looked Facebook. like Paul Giamatti wearing it, <laughs> recording it. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yeah. Facebook is just like it's it's like a trash. It's what's it called? That T. S. Eliot. It's a wasteland. <laughs> I never read it, but <laughs> it's a funny the joke. The title I get the the idea. Our friend Aaron Eaves does a funny joke. Hey, what's up? He does a funny joke on uh, Facebook where, like, to this day, yeah, he'll comment on a Facebook post that's like twelve years old. I love that. And it'll just pop if you ever look at Facebook. A, w- a post from 2008 will pop up because Aaron has just replied to it. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Aaron, you goofy boy. How does he find them? Can you search by year? I don't know how he does it. Yeah. Would this be a, a funny bonus episode someday? Since we're recording at Bob Bazaar, which is walkable distance to our pal Aaron's yeah. house, mm-hmm. it would be funny to do a bonus episode where we walk record ourselves walking to his house and i don't know look and we're th- wearing look surprising <laughs> him <laughs> yeah, yeah. We surprise him and we have stones and <laughs> a baseball bat yeah <laughs> you want to pull a prank where we bust into his house and say everybody down on the fucking ground <laughs> <laughs> well you know <laughs> something to put in the back pocket as yeah. a fun prank <laughs> anyway so yeah where we left john mcafee he did a lot of drugs he got into the computer business he came up with a solution for the first computer virus and made millions of dollars and then lost a lot of it due to an arrow trekking legal issue. <laughs> so John has decided to leave the United States mm. and go to Belize. You know, okay. We know a lot of comedians who All moved right. to L.A. Yeah. Maybe next they'll go to Belize, too. You know how people who love Bieber are believers? Yes. If you love Belize, are you a Belizer? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for laughing. <laughs> so, um, Johnny is in. No one even answered. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Mr. John is in Belize, and while he's down there, he meets a microbiologist mm. named Allison Adonisio. Okay. She was a Harvard. Apparently, researcher. a microbiologist is less than three inches flaccid. <laughs> Um. Yeah, she was tiny, t- a tiny, tiny biologist. 
Uh, she worked at Harvard, and she was working on this idea. Nathan has a microbiologist in The Curse, <laughs> <laughs> now on Paramount+. Plus. She was working on this idea that certain plants found along a river in Belize could be used to treat infections in humans and subsequently lead to a whole new kind of antibiotic. Tell me the plant name. I don't have that information. So she's Shit. working on, sort of in a way, she's working on antivirus technology. Oh my god, Mike. Yeah, I Mike, mean, you're so I clever. didn't even think yes! of that. <laughs> uh, was this the premise of that movie Medicine Man with Sean Connery when he had a ponytail? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was called Ponytail Man. <laughs> <coughs> anyway. I mean, I think the ponytail was the medicine in that movie. <laughs> yeah, you have to Everyone suck. needed to suck on it. <laughs> Shuckle my ponytail. <laughs> yeah. My pony you know, yeah, you do it, oh, James. You guys are just as good. No. No. <laughs> uh, Sean, I'm dying. Shuck on this. <laughs> oh, lower, my, lower my ponytail into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting better. <laughs> so McAfee, as Mike smartly pointed out, he's an expert in getting rid of viruses. And he was really interested in this research, this new, mm -hmm. maybe this new antibiotic that's like natural, comes from plants, it's in Belize. Yeah. So he decided to work with her. I mean, they both decided to work together. And he would kind of put up the money and make a lab and she'd do the research. Can I ask James? Yeah. Did they both get infected with the virus of love? No, they did not. Oh, okay. They did not. I thought maybe... They no, no, it's know. a good guess. Well, romance. No, that no. I thought of a joke, but it's like <laughs> ill-timed now. But it would have been better about five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Better than my Belizer one. Okay. Okay. Listen to this. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm oh. McAfee. Hank. <laughs> the Hank theme song. What a moment. <laughs> We're gonna do another live show soon. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> so. John wanted to create this product that could be, you know, used in medicines all over the world, probably make him a billion dollars. So did or I. They called this company Quoramex. Oh, catchy. <laughs> um, so things are going well. Looking optimistic. New venture. He's in Belize. Yeah. Unfortunately, people in John's circle started to notice some, shall we say, changes in him. What one well, one employee said he's become very paranoid. <laughs> Um, he, was, he starts talking about taking over the country. Hmm. And in fact... Please? Yeah. And in fact, uh, this scientist, Alison Adonisio, was like, I think this guy is a madman, she's starting to think. John's getting weird living in the jungle. <laughs> John, I mean, he's literally in a compound in the jungle. John, John said, quote, My fragile connection to polite society has without a doubt been severed. Wow. So... He's going a little cuckoo. I felt that before. I yeah. imagine Vincent Price saying that in like a <laughs> horror movie. <laughs> um, John starts drinking again. Oh, uh. He starts seeing a number of Belizean sex workers. Okay. Um, quite a number of them. These young women that yeah. he was sleeping with. In the documentary I saw, one of John's girlfriends was like, John wanted sex morning till night, all day, seven days a week, morning to night. Mm. He just wanted so much sex. His mind has become untethered. <laughs> not but just his penis has become super tethered. <laughs> <laughs> well, not just that. But John was experimenting with bath salts called MDPV that are supposed to really increase your sex drive. So much so that they're nicknamed perv powder. <laughs> so he's in this compound in Belize, just snorting perv powder. <laughs> yes, and having sex like 20 hours a day. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. I know. John said that this was the cause of his crazy new libido, and he called perv powder the most finest drug ever. <laughs> yeah. Perv powder. So wait, how do you make perv powder? <laughs> um. John's horniness spread to some weird tweets. Okay. In June 2018, John tweeted, Whale fucking, no joke. Each year on Feb 1st, in the Molokai Channel, a few men compete in the world's only whale fucking contest. Humpback whales are easy to fuck for a second or less. World record, 31 seconds. I competed once, almost got my ribs crushed. Stick with ostriches. 
Later that year, John tweeted, <laughs> Some call me whale fucker. All right. There's a private club of a few dozen Maori men and one butch woman that meet in Molokai each year to fuck a whale. Oh. True. Men on paddle boards herd the whale while one tries to fuck it. Wouldn't let me in the club. Tried it alone. Epic fail. So well, I actually he's humble enough to admit that he failed at his goal. Also pretty funny to say epic fail. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I did look this up, and I think it was a joke. Oh, I don't okay. think anybody's fucking whales, um, but I did. Th- I take the time to look it up. So perf powder, g- it, it boosts your libido and makes you funny on <laughs> online. Yes. I did get really sad there for a sec that some men get so rich, they try fucking whales. It hurt m- hurt me deep inside. I know. It's. I, I mean don't think it's true. If it makes you feel better, okay. I think that was a joke. John became demented. There's no doubt about it. Looks like he needs uh, anti-virus uh, uh, brain drugs. I almost didn't mention this because it's just disgusting, but I might as well. This what part is true? John, l- ups- the the ladies that John was having sex with said that he want. I'm not making this up. <laughs> he said squeal like a whale. No. They said he wanted them to cut a hole in a hammock, and then they sit in the hammock. I don't know. Trigger warning if you don't like hearing about poo. And he said that he wanted them to poo in his mouth. <laughs> From the hammock. Tr- trigger yes. warning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After well, everything we've I'm said. I'm just letting someone know, <laughs> hey. It, the history of this podcast. This is what he supposedly He makes liked. the Toronto uh, bedsheet bandit look like a, a superhero, like a, like a decent... Uh, law-abiding man. I know. People who like eating a ton of poo, stop listening now. <laughs> so he's doing, he's snorting perf powder and eating yeah. human shit. Yeah. In his <laughs> compound in the jungle. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. He tried everything. Yeah. And it get w- gets worse, guys. So his compound in the jungle is near a small, <laughs> impoverished <laughs> village called Carmelita, which is a beautiful, beautiful name. name. Yeah. Yes. He used to get tacos at Carmelita's in the Junction. Remember yes. that? That's why I never thought of that name. Yeah. I was trying to place it. Mm. So in 2011, mm. a villager who was nicknamed Burger. <laughs> 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 I mean, I think it's his nickname. He fired a gun outside one of John's girlfriend's houses. No. Now, story why? goes that Burger was either firing at a drug dealer's motorcycle, possibly, or maybe some stray dogs that attacked him, or maybe a delicious pickle pumpernickel bun. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but uh, <laughs> Burger. Uh, so Burger fired a gun outside of John's girlfriend's Berger, house. I'm I'm anticipating that Burger made a mistake here. I'm he literally picturing a hamburger holding a gun. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> keep that image. Why not? So John got incensed. How dare this burger fire a gun outside my girl's home? (laughs) And so John goes to Burger's house with a gun of his own. Oh, Oh, shit. From high off his mind on perv powder. Yes, literally. Yeah, he's got a gun. He's got a hard boner. (laughs) Yes, probably. (laughs) Burger wasn't home. (laughs) Shit all over his face. Shot. <laughs> oh God! Imagine you got shot by a man with a huge bone of <laughs> shit all over his face, just screaming. <laughs> That's not how I want to die. No, me neither. Luckily for Burger, Burger wasn't home. But luckily for Burger, Burger wasn't <laughs> home. <laughs> it sounds like a kid song. It sounds insane. <laughs> um, but John, he went up to Burger's family. And he he demanded that Burger's family give him Burger's gun. I still am picturing him with a boner <laughs> and shit on his face at this point. Yeah. Um, and he told us told Burger's family, if you don't give me Burger's gun, I'll kill him. Jeez. Fuck. Um, John started getting on a whole weird vigilante justice kick. Like he he was really <laughs> getting insane. John had a entire police station built in Carmelita, the small kind of impoverished Belizean town near his house. So he, he built him a giant big police station himself. And in John's mind, Carmelita was being overrun by criminals and drug lords and was a major transit point for narco traffickers. But it, like everything I saw was that it wasn't true at all. It's just some small little village, you know? Right. 
<clears throat> so um, John also donated M16s and tear gas to local cops and paid them <laughs> overtime himself to have them patrol the streets at night. <laughs> For right. burger? Yeah, burger. All because of burger? Basically, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so now these police are kind of acting like John's own personal army. Huh. He also has his own security guard team who are. Well, didn't he want to take over the country anyways? Yeah, that's so what he's starting there. Yep. So, and John also has his own security guard team and they're getting sketchy. He's hiring former gang members and drug dealers to be like in his security team. John, with his new army, imposed a local curfew time in the village while his armed guards patrolled the area. Interesting. Um. John told a reporter that he is all that stands between Carmelita and rampant criminality. <laughs> Again, this is a little village. So he's running his own little dictatorship here. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, again, in 2011, John got in a fight with a neighbor named David Middleton. And <laughs> supposedly, David Middleton robbed one of John McAfee's properties. McAfee hired two hitmen to beat this neighbor up. <laughs> they did. They took him in the woods, beat him up, and tortured him, and it was all so violent that this guy died <laughs> in the hospital. I'm sorry, why had the guy done? He had he had allegedly had stolen something from one of John's properties. Okay. You want to hear what the 2022 estimate for the population of Belize is? Five million? 441,471. That's it? Really? Is that right there? Yeah, that's small. Wow. I know. I'm sorry. When you were talking about his other neighbor, neighbor David, I was trying to look it up because I was like, how easy would it be for John McAfee to actually just dominate this island? And it looks like it actually could be pretty easy. Yeah. Not or an not, island. Not an island, sorry. Yeah. Country, yeah. So, so Middleton Central died. America. Yes. Yeah, so Bur Burger must have been like, I. That could have been me. Yeah, I'm so lucky. Yeah. So, so what was his nickname? Fries. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so John basically has a guy killed, basically, right. um, allegedly, I guess. Mm. Um, I'm gonna go to McDonald's tomorrow and eat fries first. And I, got, I got fries. I'm coming for Burger next. <laughs> 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 but here's the thing: the guy who died, David Middleton. He was um, friends with a very high up Belizean gangster named Mac 10. Uh oh. What a name. Oh shit. Mac 10. That's a rapper from South Central, I believe, S California. So, but this is a different Mac 10, eh? Probably, I'm right. guessing. Mm -hmm. So, John learned that Mac 10 is pissed and coming for him. And now John's like, oh, fuck, I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm fearing for my life over here. But he's got he just bought a whole army. Yeah, but Mac 10 was like a powerful super gangster. influential. So McAfee arranged a meeting with Mac 10 at a public place. McAfee wanted to gain Mac 10's trust. And it'd be funny if he's like, let's meet at the burger shop. And then he meets at a burger stand. But Mac 10 goes to Burger's house because they get mixed <laughs> up. <laughs> Um, John John <laughs> wanted Mac Ten in his entourage, really, and he he, he sort of absorbed him into his entourage. Absorbed Mac, Mac Ten. 10? Oh wow. my God! See, he's one of those guys. I know. There are so many photos of McAfee shirtless, surrounded by local Belizean guys holding machine guns. Like the, I I have to credit the documentary. Um, it was a Netflix documentary about McAfee, and I also watched a a YouTube video. I'll try to credit these, but um. There's just endless photos of McAfee and Belize kind of like looking like crossed arms and a bunch of dudes around him holding up machine guns. Man, I have no photos like that of me. I know. Me neither. I have a photo of me and Andy Kindler. That's pretty good. <laughs> so the Belizean government is kind of keeping an eye on all this, right? Right. And they're going, that's interesting. John McAfee has a compound in our jungle with a lab in it, and a private army made up of gangsters and drug dealers. <laughs> hmm. So you start thinking, maybe this John McAfee is making and selling meth. But right. he still has, like, the McAfee, like, virus killer security thing. That's a long time ago. He's already invented that, right? 
Yes, <laughs> that's like in the uh, 80s. Yeah, that's what I thought. But like, <laughs> but we were still using it in the yeah. 90s and the 2000s. Yeah, right? it was bought out by Intel. Oh, okay. But I don't know at what point. I missed they that. They Sorry. No, don't worry. I don't know what. I thought he was still, but he. Yeah, and then oh yeah, and then they bought him out. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know what point they stopped using the McAfee name. Okay. But. Because I still remember it from the. T- this yeah. millennium. Yeah, I think you're right. Anyway, so the government, they're going, this is interesting. You know, this McAfee is his own army and <laughs> a big lab. Uh, maybe he's selling meth like Walter White. Yeah. So in 2012, they raid the compound. B- big deal. McAfee spends the night in jail. Now, the government didn't find meth. The worst thing they found was a substance similar to perv powder. <laughs> How about that? <coughs> so John gets cleared of charges, but this yes. whole thing did not help his paranoia. Let's just yeah. say Were that. Were all these gangsters on perv powder, too? I don't know. <laughs> that compound probably s- was stanky. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly agree. Uh so John is freaking out now. Now he's like uh, Ray Liotta and Goodfellas with the helicopters, you know? Classic. He's talking about always seeing suspicious figures. He's saying he's he's being held up by silent gunmen in the dead of night. He's convinced the government is after him. Uh, John <laughs> McAfee is like, the, the Belizean government is after me, okay? Um, now here's a very dark thing. Um, remember Allison Adenizio? Yeah, the scientist. He was the working scientist. On. Yes. So well, she was working on real virus, antivirus stuff. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> so clever. She gets fed up <laughs> with John and decided she wants to leave and move back to the U.S. She claimed on a Showtime documentary that John tried to kill her and also drugged her and sexually assaulted her. Yeah. Oh, sure. John denied this, um, but I mean, he's not exactly a guy you're gonna tr- take his word on a lot of things put it that way so really the catalyst for things getting really fucking crazy was was this john had a neighbor called greg fall who was a floridian bar owner <laughs> and greg and john hate each other greg hated that his neighbor has all these armed guards has a harem of women He's annoyed because John had nine dogs that are always wandering around the beach. So John's neighbor, this Florida guy, he threatens that he's going to shoot John's dogs. Uh Uh-oh. I'm a dog lover, so I don't like that either. So one day, nine of John's dogs died by poisoning. Ooh. This is like... Um, it does remind me of, as we mentioned in the previous episode, Dennis the Menace versus Mr. Wilson type thing. Yeah. Or like Homer Simpson versus Flanders. Yeah. They're just two neighbors who g- can't stand each other. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> they poison each other's yeah, dogs. they poison each other's dogs, and one is always on perv powder. Now, um, so here's here's the uh, how, it, how it played out, and you could make your own judgment on what you think might have happened. So one day, all of John's dogs are poisoned and die. A couple days later, that neighbor who threatened to kill John's dogs ho, John. was killed execution style with a gunshot to the head. Nothing was stolen, oh. just shot. So okay. you got to think John is a little bit of a suspect in that case. Yeah. Hey? Yes. So the police come to question John, but he's really stressed out. He's like, uh-oh. <laughs> so he hides. <laughs> Hides buried in the sand with his head covered in a cardboard box for three hours. <laughs> really? Yes. This is awesome. I know. John said he didn't shoot Greg, the, the neighbor. It was the <laughs> Belizean government that <laughs> shot Greg, thinking it was d- John. So his story is like, I didn't shoot my neighbor. The government did because they thought it was me. Okay. Like, why would they think that guy? I mean, <coughs> it's not like he's not recognizable. And he was, a, you know. Yeah. So here's the thing. If you come up with a clever ploy to hide most of your body in the sand and then you put a box over your head, (laughs) are you doing this for the rest of your life? (laughs) Every time the the cops come by? (laughs) Yeah, really. I got to go to the sand again. (laughs) Oh, shit. Where's the box? Where's the head? Where's the head box? (laughs) Um, So John is like so afraid now of the government. He goes off the grid. 
and he sneaks through the sneaks through the border into Guatemala. Can I say that his paranoia and his fear of the government reminds me of the way we feel living under Trudeau. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you something about him like going through all this insanity and craziness in Belize and then running and hiding and going off the grid and <laughs> crossing the border into Guatemala? Can I just say one thing about all that? Uh, yes. I bet you it's beautiful down there and the weather is gorgeous and you barely have to wear a shirt. <laughs> you just wear cut off jean shorts and just party. Well, based on the video footage I saw, it looked like it was fabulous weather. He didn't um, seem to spend a lot of his money on shirts. Wouldn't you love to be able to be on the run from the cops and just jean shorts and a good pair of sneaks? Yeah, that would be gr- ideal. It's your s- satchel of perv powder. <laughs> Where's my perv powder? I gotta get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I, put away. I left it in the box. <laughs> Where'd it go? <laughs> um, so when John was a guy in Guatemala <laughs> emerges out of the emerges out of the bushes with a bunch of perv powder and tries to ingratiate himself <laughs> to a new village <laughs> <laughs> with poo in his mouth. <laughs> Senor, poo in my mouth and I'll give you your wildest <laughs> dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I found a new antibiotic. It wasn't those plants. It's human poo. <laughs> <laughs> they say poo's poison, but they just want you to believe that. <laughs> They're lying. <laughs> so, um, Flat earthers, but for poo poison? <laughs> <laughs> when John flees Belize and... Please Belize. <laughs> Please <laughs> Belize me, officer. <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> he flees Belize and goes to Guatemala. He was actually joined by a vice reporter and vice cameraman. Oh, vice is fucking sick, dude. And the the documentary about uh, John McAfee on Netflix like shows this footage of these vice guys going, sneaking through the border with John and his Whoa. girlfriend, who was very young. Um, so when John's in Guatemala, part of how they found him is that when Vice published an article of like, here we are with John fucking uh, McAfee in Guatemala, the journalist was like, delete the metadata. Make sure you delete the metadata. And the probably unpaid interns at Vice.com did not. And so you could see where, like the location of where the photo was oh. taken. And that helped bust John McAfee. Oh, I think I remember this. Yeah. Now I want to see this movie. This, like the back half of john's life i want to see that it's insane and and i think it was the first episode of this we talked about um halt and catch fire yes lee pace plays john mcavee it would genuinely be perfect yes (laughs) there should be a movie about his life it's insane but picture lee pace oh yeah no beard, no, no no shirt well no shirt he had a little like mustache mustache goatee goatee thing. thing yeah yeah, no shirt. Oh yeah, like looking crazed, running through the jungle. Oh, with like crazy friends and yeah, getting in trouble. Absolutely, it'd be the best movie ever. Yeah, you heard it here first, Hollywood. Tim Lee Pace as John McAvee in second part of his life, and the role of Burger, played by Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> 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 Burger. Um, so because of this Vice photo, John gets arrested by Interpol in Guatemala. So Vice, trying to be cool, got him busted. Yeah. Um, So John gets arrested, then fakes a heart attack (laughs) to buy his lawyer enough time to figure out how to get John sent to Florida instead of back to Belize because he doesn't want to go to Belize. He thinks the Belizean government wants to kill him. Um, So the lawyer files an appeal, and it works. This fake heart attack works. And John gets extradited to the United States. The night John landed in Miami, he picked up a sex worker named <laughs> Janice Dyson, <laughs> and she would become his third wife. Excellent. Whoa. Now that's a what a meet cute. <laughs> the story keeps tumbling down th- the cliff. In the documentary, they asked um, Janice Dyson what were th- what was the first thing she said to John, <laughs> and she said, "Well, it was what your dick sucked." And that was the first thing she said to uh, to him. Oh, cute! Love at first S- suck. Um. So anyway, <laughs> this got John out of the murder charge. You know, he's he's not going to get arrested for a murder in Belize in Florida. It's no. not like Belize is going to. What are they going to do? He's right? not going to get arrested for a murder in Florida in Florida. 
<laughs> yeah, really. Um, so, oh, by the way, if there was any doubt that John murdered his neighbor, um, in the documentary, like, it was revealed that Mac 10 was paid five grand, like, the day after that neighbor was murdered, and the guy who gave him the five grand saw Mac 10, like, come out of the bushes right by the neighbor's house. Like, it's pretty, um, cut and uh, dry, yeah. I would say. Okay. Um, so McAfee was ordered to pay $25 million to that guy's family by an American federal judge, which John never did. All right. Mm-hmm. So we're nearing the end here. Um, we're back in the U.S. John's in Miami. He's getting married to that, that woman he met after she asked him mm-hmm. to. That's nice. His wee wee. Uh, Honk. John's, he's, he's, he's pretty online. He's kind of leaning into this crazy character. He made a weird online sketch about uninstalling his antivirus software while surrounded by these women and snorting bath salts. You can look it up. I want to. He got really into crypto. That sounds like maybe not as classic as like the cheese shop sketch. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) No, yeah. Yeah. And he's like mocking McAfee antivirus in this video, which is now owned by Intel. All right. Um, Yeah, he gets back into being an entrepreneur. He um, advocates mobile phone safety, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> um, in 2015, he was appointed chief executive of something called MGT Capital, which was an investment company, and its shares rose substantially when he was brought in. Um, in 2016, he liked the sound of this song. He threw his hat into the ring to become the president of the United States as the libertarian candidate. So I remember when he was always tweeting videos during his presidential campaign and uh i would watch them and think huh this is a different type of candidate (laughs) he made trump seem like like a a boring old type of politician yeah well he contended that taxes were illegal Mm -hmm. and said he hadn't uh, filed a tax return since 2010 okay um and yeah he was like considered like um he was the favorite of the Libertarian Party in 2016. <laughs> uh, people thought he was going to get that nomination, not that it's a huge deal, but the, the documentary I watched showed a funny clip of the Libertarian Party debates, and the moderator is like, what do you think, candidates? Should someone require a license to drive? And one candidate goes, hell no! And another candidate's like, what's next? Needing a license to toast bread in your own toaster? <laughs> and then... um. Gary Johnson, the guy who eventually won, is like, well, you know, maybe there should be some kind of competency test before you can drive. And the whole audience goes, boo, <laughs> boo. <laughs> and they all look like the biggest losers you could ever imagine. Candidates, your next question. Should there be a uh, legal minimum age <laughs> for taking <laughs> perv powder? <laughs> no. So McAfee was considered a front runner, but he lost to Gary Johnson. Sad, Damn. sad, sad. So John went, fuck this, and he got on his yacht and traveled around. He made some noise about running again in 2020, but it never really happened. Now we're at the end, guys, of this journey. This is the end. That's Beautiful what that song is about. John McAfee, the <laughs> end. <laughs> on the 23rd of June, 2021, John McAfee was found dead in his prison cell. Hours after the Spanish National Court. Sorry, I should have mentioned he got arrested in Spain. It yeah. kind of came out of nowhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, he, g- he went to Spain and he got arrested because... Um, he had a prison cell on his yacht. <laughs> no. Um, the United States was after him for avoiding taxes. Oh. Oh. Because so, he, um, he declared he hadn't paid them since 2010. Yes. His, right. So... Um, he was in Spain? He was arrested in Spain. He was going to be extradited to the United States. Damn. But in his prison cell, he was found dead. Um, and you interesting how he died, supposedly, killed himself by hanging. No. Now, this sparked some conspiracy theories yeah. about the possibility that maybe McAfee wasn't didn't kill himself. Maybe he was murdered. Now, this was partially fueled by a 2019 post where McAfee himself tweeted, quote, if I suicide myself, I didn't. I was whacked also got a tattoo that said whacked with a money sign on it um people sort of drew comparisons to the circumstances of this death to jeffrey epstein 
The thing is, though, yeah. the Epstein maybe murder is interesting because you go, oh, maybe all these rich scumbags are trying to kill him to cover up their crimes. Yeah. I mean, with John McAfee. That's what I'm trying to. Th- what is it? I don't it? know if there's really a reason to, to kill him. Yeah, like. I know Burger Secrets and <laughs> the uh, <laughs> special information about that scientist in Belize. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know the it's Pakistani good. brother's uh, e- email address. Yeah. My neighbor's. <laughs> My neighbor's out to kill me because my head box blew onto his lawn. <laughs> I invented a special <laughs> secret way to kill nine dogs. <laughs> um, so yeah, McAfee had claimed before his death several times if he's ever found dead by hanging, it was it would mean he was murdered. And also right. he spoke with um, one of his girlfriends or wife like the day before he died and he didn't seem suicidal. All that said, if he he's a kind of weirdo that I bet if he was if he had already warned people a million times, if you ever find me hanging, that was a murder, and then yeah. hang himself he wants just to, to fuck leave with everybody. Fresh, yeah, he lived to seventy five. That's he, beautiful. He was seventy five <laughs> when yeah. he hung his damn ass. Yeah, and he claimed to have been survived by his forty seven children. <laughs> okay, so he claims he's the craziest person I've ever heard of. I know. Also. Here we are being told, oh, you should, you know, have only one or two drinks a week, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. This guy lived till 75 at his own hand. I yeah. Mean, how I'm old would he have lived if he didn't kill himself? That's the thing. I'm s- like, yeah, it's like, man, ugh, it stresses me out. I'm on meds for like because I like chips. Like, I don't <laughs> fucking get it, man. I know. Like Some people are just blessed. This guy just went started off like a rocket and kept going for 75 years i know and he was like doing drugs again in his 70s i'm like actually <laughs> surprised that he didn't die from his heart exploding from his own mm-hmm. like uh, like lifestyle it's crazy it's crazy and and, and, he, and that he didn't even die at 75 of a heart attack which would honestly be impressive yeah. considering his lifestyle yeah. he hung himself <laughs> yeah oh boy well, well <sighs> that, that's a spectacular telling of a uh, insane man's life. Thank, Thank you, you very James. much. Yeah, I don't know where I was during the height of McAfee mania, but I missed a lot of that. I didn't know. I think it was this. one of those things I knew about, but it was so crazy. You kind of don't. You're like that can't be right. Well, he would. Yeah, like because in my head I picture like the pillow, my pillow guy, yeah. and I picture like the Papa John's guy, like melded together. Like America's always got these big <laughs> insane guys tweeting nonsense like ten years ago. That you're just like, I can't keep up with all these like mustachio goateed <laughs> psycho knots. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> we should do the Papa John's guy. Papa John Schneider? Yeah. Was yeah. I don't know. But I, I you do know what I mean? Like they start blending in together because yeah. they're the same sort of like sweaty guy. Yeah. I do remember though uh, when he was running for president, I would see his tweets and he would always be yeah on a yacht or in the jungle somewhere hot with his like young girlfriend who'd always just be like lazing around in a bikini or something and he would often do uh sex jokes during his presidential videos yeah his political campaign he, videos. he said in a in a campaign video like i'm the only candidate who has no shame i've done every drug i've d- done all the like you know what i mean he was just he went for it which i guess if you <laughs> are john mcafee you might as well <laughs> if i become president i'm Hooking up a steering wheel to the country and driving it all through the jungle. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, Uh, I'm the only presidential candidate who's uh, lived under the ground for three days with a box on his head. (laughs) 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 Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) man. Well, it's crazy. Is it time to be paid a visit by the evilometer? Whoa, a big yacht is just zooming by, and who's coming out of it down the gangplank? Is that what it's called? Mm. Oh, look at Evilometer right now. He's no shirt on. He's got a big s- bag of, what is that? Perv powder. Oh, and don't snort it. And he's um, also, he's paranoid <laughs> that the government's after him and trying to kill him. Oh. Get real, Evilometer. Get a life, Evilometer. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> what to give John? Well, James, you dove headfirst so John into hey it, hey. so I think you should. What's I mean, sorry? honestly, the allegation of his colleague really bumped him up because if you took that out of it, he's pretty bad, but it's most like, I don't know. 
He, well, he's he more just that he was destructive. Guy. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, find I do this, know what you mean. I find I this a tough mean. one. I guess I'd say 7.5. What? Is that way high or way low? Uh, I was going to go five. Yeah. And I was going to say five because he most likely murdered a guy by he paid a guy to do it. Mm -hmm. Like hired a hitman, Mac Ten probably, maybe yeah. not, maybe yeah. not. Actually, maybe I'm not. scared, Chris. And let me just change it. it. Probably wasn't. My mind is a little frazzled from doing all this. Five point five. That's my score. Yeah, You're right. Yeah, five point five. But well. I almost, I agree with you. Like the, the, the I, I mean, if he if he did that uh, sexual harassment or assault to the uh, to his colleague, the scientist, um, I'm sure he. And also, they they had that crazy office. With the with mm -hmm. the like eighties style yuppie insane people like gang banging everywhere throughout the office. I'm sure he he treated women like shit. Um, you know, so I think we just probably know about the one assault because it was like a high profile scientist. He definitely, yeah, and he had many many ladies, sex workers hanging around. God only knows. Yeah, he would take perv pills, the yeah. perv powder. And then just jackhammer his way through the jungle. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> the jungles of Belize all the way to I Guatemala. Know. I know. He's a freak. Yeah, I'm giving him five because he's insane, but that doesn't count as going higher than five, I don't think. But probably killed somebody and probably treated uh, women badly. Hmm. Um, John McAfee, um, uh, antivirus legend. Uh, his beginning is funny, like all the drugs and passing it or being hiding behind a garbage can, mm. uh, being a railway guy, a NASA man, um, being a sort of Keith Richards guy. But then when it gets to the heart of darkness stuff in Belize and yeah, the assault that ordering a guy to be executed, not so cool. No. Um, gets dark. G yes. Gets dark. Also. You should pay your damn taxes, Mr. McAfee. Oh, that's right. How do you think we have roads and policemen yes. and yeah. firemen and women? Um, I mean, what do you think it come? Where do you think it comes from? How do you think tree branches get removed off of the y your lawn? That's right. Yeah. So I'm gonna give him a seven point four. Nice, John McAfee. I never thought that the McAfee antivirus software, to be perfectly honest, actually did anything when we would run it on my <laughs> computer. Also, I, there's no way to verify it. Right. <laughs> it was probably just a goddamn scam. Because we would still get viruses, even though we had the uh, software. I hated having What's a that robot that? one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember, but we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do a bonus episode someday about oh. the robot thing. And I'm gonna take a, uh, I'm gonna give Hollywood an F for not making a biopic yet. Biopic of John McAfee's back half of his life, starring Lee Pace. Yes. Or from Halt and Catch Fire. Uh, this is a really dumb idea. Jim Carrey. Imagine. Right. I mean, his life is, is turning sort of more into John McAfee's <laughs> life with each <laughs> every true. time. We might learn more about Jim Carrey yeah. someday. Hmm. Well, guys, good work, James. Thank you. That was fun. Mike, you have fun. I had fun, Chris. <laughs> Do you have fun? Yeah, I'm freaking tired, man. I know. Yeah. Okay, got to get you to bed. <laughs> Well, guys, that was another great episode of Evil.